Good morning or good afternoon even and um, welcome to this meeting of the Perth Common Good Fund Committee on Monday the 26th of August 2024. Um, I'm not a, the only intimation of apologies I've had is from Councillor Drysdale who's at a meeting in Edinburgh and was thinking he might or might not be able to join. Um, the council leader Grant Lang has um, said he will not be here and I don't think Councillor Donaldson is going to be here so we've um, got everyone that we're going to have. Um, first of all, the minutes of the meeting of the 29th of April. Sorry, um, declarations of interest. Um, are there any declarations of interest? I have one in respect of the matters at para 6.12 of the applications for financial assistance, and I will be handing over to Councillor John Rebeck to take that item and I will step out of the room for that one. Thank you. Um, moving on then to um, item three, the minutes of the last meeting on the 29th of April 2024. Um, are there any matters arising from those minutes or can we accept those minutes? Agreed, thank you very much. OK, then um, we'll move on to item five. And first of all, I'd ask Sarah Kimmett to um, make a few comments about the papers. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Um, the version that has been shared with yourself was unfortunately not the, the most up to date version of the report. So the key, the only key change is at um, paragraph 6.18, where you'll see the, the application has reduced um, in what they are requesting, they were the group were awarded another um, another um, funding application, so they are now only requesting six thousand eight hundred forty eight pounds. Any other changes oh, apart from the overall part, um, at four point four? Obviously, the table, the finance table, has been changed to reflect this. Um, any other changes in the report are. Mm, extra information, so things like um, locations of where some of these projects will be taking place. Um, so if you do have any questions about those, I'm happy to happy to answer. Thank you very much for that. And we'll move on firstly to the small grants. And we have an application from Adventure Circus. We're seeking a grant of £8,120 to contribute towards the costs for the Dragonfire project. Dragonfire is a live and outdoor storytelling, a puppetry, acrobatic and fire manipulation event about Perth's forgotten 6th century legend of a dragon who lived on Canoel Hill. It's considered that a grant of £8,120 is consistent with the criteria. Um, we have in two of the three previous years awarded similar amounts of um, grant funding to this venture um, and I'm happy to recommend that we make a grant this year of £8,120. Um, are other members happy with that or first of all a question from Councillor Barrett. Liz Barrett. And Thank you, Deputy Provost. Um, I'm just looking at the financial statements and the volume of applications that we have in front of us. Um, and just confirmation of are we close to going bust on the budget? Um, no, I don't think we are because the, the financial statement takes into account what we're spending today. And we have in previous years um, been happy to, if you like, um, go over the budget uh, in some degree if 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 we wanted to. Um, so I'm 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 confident that overall we're in a, a a good position. Thank you. Thanks. And um, Councillor Peter Barrett. Um, thanks, convener. I just wondered um, if we could get some information uh, as to you know how the um, scale and scope of this project has changed since we were awarding it just over four thousand pounds in 21-22, um, and then double it last 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 year. Um, and what schools um, are they are they working with, and have they expanded the numbers of schools that they're uh, working with? Um, thank you very much for that, um, Councillor Peter Barrett. Um, I don't have um, <coughs> a detailed answer to that. Um, I think that in 21-22, it might have been simply that we were less generous, um, but I'm not sure. 
Um, Sarah, are you able to provide an answer, or can you, or or Peter, would you be, would you be happy with an answer to this late later on? I'd be grateful for any answer we can have at the moment, convener. Yeah, no, no, I I, I accept that, Sarah. You don't have any any indication of which schools exactly they're working with. I can go back and ask this ask this question, let you know. And um, as I wasn't involved in the earlier applications, not a hundred percent sure what the change was. Okay, and um, thanks for that. Um, convener, can I just um, ask if you can clarify what, what is our policy on 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 repeat funding? I mean, obviously we're we're, we're not the community investment fund, um, which wouldn't be. Um, Considering repeat bids of this this nature, and appreciate a lot of our businesses, you know, repeats for groups going on outings and 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 all the rest of it. But it, it does seem to me that um, that this group is becoming kind of reliant on Perth Common Good Fund for core funding for for arts, and I'm not entirely sure that that's that's what we're about. I'm I'm th th thanks for that, Peter. I'm I'm not as sure that that we have if you like. A policy as such on on repeat funding, but um, it, it is our policy um, in each application um, to show what funding has been provided in the previous three years, uh, so that members can um, look at that and, and and see what has been awarded in the past. Um, but it's always been my understanding, and I think our practice that that we take each year's application on on, on its own merits. Okay, thanks, convener. Okay, thank you for that. Um, in in in. Um, okay. Um, first of all, Councillor McCall, and then Councillor McCall. Thank you. Initial one was uh, the very first one we've seen three years ago. Was the first one, and um, so that might be some sort of explanation. But I'm kind of minded towards Peter's way of thinking that this seems like an awful lot and it seems an awful lot of repeat work without a lot of detail behind it. I mean, they say you know, 100 people benefit from it, mostly from the common good area, but we don't have any breakdown of that either. And I just feel that for this amount of money in the current financial climate, it would be helpful to have a bit more detail behind it as to which schools they work with and what participation there is. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, in, in, in view of the comments have been made, um, do any members wish to um, raise an amendment with regard to either lesser funding or not granting this um, proposal funding at all? Thank you. No. Um, in, in, in that case, um, I would. So, so, sorry, convener, I, was, I put an E in for amendment and then misspell amendment. So apologies. My, my, my apologies. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look both to the room and, and, and to my screen and I'm failing singularly to do both properly. But there we go. OK, no, thanks, Peter. Um, w would you wish to state your amendment? Thank you. Um, yeah, convener, um, I, I would move that we make an award of £5,000, which I think um, it covers the, the original level of funding plus some inflationary um, uplifts. Um, and I, I think that's a, a, a reasonable um, award to be making in the circumstances that uh, Councillor McCall described. So. No, thank you very much for that amendment. Is there a seconder for that amendment? Yes, we have a seconder from um, Councillor McCall and um, Councillor Ahern has indicated seconding, as has Councillor Zillis Barrett, so it's well well supported. <laughs> um, in, in that case, um, I think if we can um, move to a vote on this item now. Thank you, Jess. Yes, I'm 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 standing as a, as the motion, if you like, um, with the, um, the the full amount of eight thousand one hundred and twenty. Do you need um, a that, seconder for that? Uh, that? That's a very good question that's just <laughs> been asked. Is is there a seconder? Um, Councillor Massey will second that one. Thank you. Very good question, Councillor Barrett. Is 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 your amendment a different amendment? No, sorry, that's me voting for the amendment in case you couldn't see me. All right, OK, um, we, we haven't quite got to a vote yet, but um, no, we'll take that in. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you, convener. So we have a motion from yourself 
seconded by Councillor Massey to grant £8,120. We have an amendment from Peter Barrett, I've noted the seconder as Liz Barrett, to make an award of £5,000. Members, when I call your name, please let me know if you're voting for the motion for the full amount or the amendment for £5,000. Councillor Ahern. Amendment. Councillor Liz Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Peter Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Chan. Amendment. Councillor McPherson. Uh, motion. Councillor Massey. Motion. Councillor McCall. Amendment. Councillor Parrott. Motion. And Councillor Rebeck. Amendment. Thank you. I have three votes for the motion and six for the amendment and therefore the amendment will carry. Thank you very much. Um, indeed, we, in that case, we make a new grant of £5,000 um, for this application. Thank you. Um, moving on then. Just Councillor McCall. Sorry. It's just really a comment on this. I think the reason I was happy to support the amendment is because of the lack of detail behind it. So it's maybe worthwhile asking the applicant if they can provide some of that detail should they wish to apply again in future years or even give us some feedback that would help inform us a bit better. Thank you. No, thank you for that, Councillor McCall. I, I, I do at Bridge End always try and um, pick up on additional detail where I think it's um, needed, but um, of course I'm, I'm not going to be able to second guess, if you like, every, every question that people come up with, but that's a, a perfectly fair comment and I'm sure officers will take that on board in terms of the level of detail that in members are interested in. Moving on then, um, the next item before us is the Children Alone Seeking Asylum um, application. Um, CASA are seeking £500 to provide summer activities for children and young people who are alone and seeking asylum and are accommodated as located after and care experienced by Perth and Kinross Council. Um, this is a small application for a grant of up to £500 and I am happy to recommend to members that we make a grant of up to £500. Um, are members happy to agree that? Agree. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you. Moving on now, the next application is from the Friends of Lethem Primary Parent Council. Friends of Lethem Primary Parent Council are requesting a grant of £2,355 to contribute towards costs at the school's 60th anniversary celebration in September 2024. Um, I'm happy in this case to make um, or recommend that we make a grant of £1,734 consistent with criteria 9.2 alpha um, of, of, of the, of the um, guidelines that we have. Um, Councillor Massey. Uh, I would like to put forward an amendment to award the full amount of £2,355 uh, with the cost of living uh, crisis. The, it's a well-run uh, parent council. Uh, the cost of the uh, school day, I just believe that rewarding the full amount will be beneficial to the uh, parent council. OK, thank you for that. Is there a seconder for that amendment? Thank you. Um, would I have a seconder for the, the motion? Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Um, in that case, unless members wish to ask further questions or make a comment, um, we will go to a vote on that one. Thank you. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Yep. And certainly, Councillor Rebeck. Uh, th can, th so, sorry, sorry, I, convener, I, sorry to interrupt you, John. I just want to... Uh, Try to intimate a question, convener. Yeah, no, please, sorry, please, please go ahead first and then uh, and then. If I'm jumping the gun, right, sorry. Um, um, I, I just wondered if we could get some um, more information um, as to the the, the 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 catering side of it. I was kind of surprised that when the the item was two thousand eight hundred and fifty pounds for the hire of a burger uh, van, which seemed um, a, a, a fairly um, expensive uh, item to me um, for for something that I would have expected um, somebody just to, to, to be selling burgers. But maybe that's instead of selling them. OK, no, thanks for that. I think I think Councillor Rebeck wants to come in with comment there. To Thank perhaps you. Perhaps an answer to your question. To partially answer the question and 
my understanding is that the burgers will either be free or subsidised. I can't remember which, but the 2,850 quid is involving the food, basically. Um, this will be a big event. And given what my colleague, Councillor Massey's said, um, it is about the cost of the school day. And it, it, the, the difference between the £1,700 recommended and the 2,300 quid, that is 600 quid. Whilst completely respecting the, the criteria of the common good fund, we're not a bottomless pit. However, it's a relatively small amount of money um, in respect of the common good fund that will make a huge difference to the success or otherwise of, of this very important event. So yeah. that's where my second, and I hope that goes some way towards answering Councillor, Councillor Barrett's question as well. And Councillor Massey. Uh, I can uh, uh, maybe answer Councillor Barrett's question. Uh, as the owner of a uh, burger van in previous life, uh, we, you, I believe that that is, like uh, Councillor Rebecca has said, that will be uh, covering the costs of the burgers and all uh, other items that will be uh, for sale or uh, discounted at the burger van. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Peter Barrett, are you, are, are you content with that explanation that this is actually a burger van not just arriving to make sales, but um, if you like, it covers the cost of, of, of the um, product supplied? Yeah, thanks, Convener. Thank you very much. Yes, a comment, Councillor McCall. Thank you. The celebration, it would be quite normal in the circumstances for catering um, and other entertainment to be provided by the organisers um, in, in order to to you know support the celebration itself. Um, so I think 60th anniversary is quite a big celebration. I am old enough to remember when it was opened. I'm almost hesitant to admit, but I can't believe 60 years have passed. But there you go. <laughs> uh, so I think I think based on the nature of this particular event, I, I think I would support um, the amendment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor McCall, for that. I think a number of us are aware of advancing years in various ways, but there we go. OK, um, I, I think we have an amendment that's been seconded and a, a motion that's been seconded. So if we can go to the vote on that. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Convener. We have a motion from yourself seconded by Bailey Ahern to grant £1,734. We have an amendment from Councillor Massey seconded by Councillor Rebeck to grant £2,355. Members, when I call your name, please let me know if you're voting for the motion or the amendment. Bailey Ahern. Motion. Councillor Liz Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Peter Barrett. Motion. Councillor Chan. Amendment. Councillor McPherson. Amendment. Councillor Massey. Amendment. Councillor McCall. Amendment. Councillor Parrott. Motion. And Councillor Rebeck. Amendment. Thank you. I have three votes for the motion and four for the amendment and therefore the amendment will carry. Thank you very much. In, in that case, we make a grant of £2,355. Thank you. Um, moving on then to the next item, which is um, NeuroCentral, um, a, a small volunteer ch run charity whose purpose is to advance the health and well-being of people in Scotland, are seeking a grant of £400 to contribute towards setting up a new support group in Perth City. Um, I am happy to recommend that we make a grant of £320 towards the £400 they request, consistent with paragraph 9.2 alpha. Um, are other members happy to agree, uh, agree that recommendation? Read, read. OK, thank you very much. We now come on to um, our ladies primary school parent council who are seeking a grant of £1,459 and threepence to contribute towards the cost of a whole school trip to the pantomime in December 2024. Um, and here I'm happy to um, recommend a grant of £1,000 um, consistent with um, our guidelines at paragraph 9.7. Um, I see Councillor Rebeck, you have um, a comment and an amendment. Thank you. Thanks again, convener. It's, it's really a little bit of Groundhog Day from 10 minutes ago. It's the same community that 
Friends of Letham Parent Council represent. It's a well-run parent council again. The cost of the school day here is even more pertinent. The cost of living at the moment is really causing challenges for many of the parents that will be involved in this. And so um, I would like to propose that, uh, like Letham Primary Parent Council, that we award the whole £1,459 and three pence, please. Thank you very much. And do you have a seconder for that amendment? Um, I see the seconding from Councillor Liz Barrett, I think was up first on the screen, but Councillor Massey as well. Um, do I have a seconder for the, the motion here? Happy to second you, convener. OK, thank you very much. Um, does anyone else wish to ask further questions with regard to this item or make comment? No, in that case, um, thank you. Let's go to a vote on this one. Thank you. Thank you, Convener. I have the motion from yourself, seconded by Councillor Peter Barrett, to award a grant of £1,000. I have an amendment from Councillor Rebeck, seconded by Councillor Liz Barrett, to make an award of £1,459 and three pence. Members, when I call your name, please let me know if you're voting for the motion or the amendment. Bailey Ahern. Amendment. Councillor Liz Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Peter Barrett. Motion. Councillor Chan. Amendment. Councillor McPherson. Amendment. Councillor Massey. Amendment. Councillor McCall. Amendment. Councillor Parrott. Motion. And Councillor Rebeck. Amendment. Thank you. I have two votes for the motion and seven for the amendment and the amendment will carry. Thank you very much. In that case, we make a grant of, um, as stated, £1,459.03. and Thank you. Moving on now to um, the next item, the Perform in Perth Festival 2025. Um, a grant of £6,230 has been requested from the Perthshire Musical Competition Festival Association. And um, I am happy here to um, recommend that we make a grant of that £6,230. Um, I think that's a grant of up to £6,230, um, depending on other grants that they may receive, um, consistent with criteria 9.2b of our guidelines. Are other members happy to support that recommendation? Agreed. Councillors Barrett, are you happy to support that recommendation? I see a nodding from Liz. Peter? Agreed. Yep, Agreed. Thank, thank you very you. much. Um, OK, in, case, in that case, um, we award a grant of £6,230. Thank you. We now move on to the Perth Indian Association. Perth Indian Association are seeking a grant of £6,000 to contribute towards their annual Diwali celebrations, which take place on the 3rd of November 2024. Um, and it's considered that a grant of £2,000 is consistent with criteria 9.2b, and I'm happy to recommend that we make that grant of £2,000. Are other members happy to um, support that recommendation? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. We now come to the Perth Outdoor Playgroup, Tayside Owls. Perth Outdoor Playgroup are seeking a grant of £618 to send two volunteers on an indoor outdoor sorry, an outdoor first aid training course and additionally to fund two half day education sessions at the playgroup. Um, this to my mind is a small um, application and um, I'm more than happy to encourage anything that it encourages kids to play outside in the fresh air in a safe and proper fashion. And um, I'm happy to recommend that we provide the full £618 um, uh, proposed. Are other members happy to support that recommendation? Councillor McCall, you want to make a comment? No? Happy to, oh, happy to second. Agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Thank you. We now move on then to the um, proposals for grants under the cost of living grants fund that we um, still have funds available. Um, the first proposal is from the Adlib Arts Group. Um, Adlib are a musical theatre and dance charity requesting £1,800 to provide free spaces um, to deserving um, individuals 
in their classes that would otherwise have to be um, paid for and, and, and funded. Um, in keeping with criteria 9.8 and as a cost of living grant, um, I'm happy to recommend that we make that grant of £1,800 in this case. Um, are other members happy to follow that recommendation? Agreed? Councillors Barretts? Thank you very much. I see a thumbs up. Liz? Thank you very much. Agreed, yep. <laughs> Moving on now to the um, Health and Wellbeing Cafe. Um, Perth Health and Wellbeing Cafe are seeking a grant of £1,560 to fund refreshments at the cafe. Similarly, um, I'm happy to um, recommend that we make that grant of £1,560 that's requested in line with criteria um, 9.8. Um, and particularly perhaps the Health and Wellbeing Cafe have not received um, any funding from the Perth Common Good Fund in the previous three years. Are members happy to support that recommendation? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Um, we now move on to the Perth Minorities Association and I would ask Councillor Rebecca to take the chair for this one. Thank you. Item 6.12, Perth Minorities Association, uh, who have asked for less than I think we originally intended. Sarah, we have had, I think my understanding is that the Ganachy Trust have come up with money of £6,848, which is half the shortfall. I think funded requested from Perth Common Good Fund is now therefore £6,848. Um, I don't think the, crit the criteria allows us to decide. I think um, my view, and I'll put forward this as a motion, given that they are now seeking. Uh, Councillor Hearn. Yeah, I've got a question, which I'll put a queue in the chat. Um, I understand that they operate out of the ESOL um, premises already. So why are they asking for rent for a premises they already occupy? I don't know. Perhaps. Uh, As far as I'm aware, this is just an ongoing rent, and because this is a new project, the safe space project, the rent for hiring under the safe space project would be included in this application. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Councillor Cole. I don't really understand that answer to the question. Sorry. So they, although they're they're already working with ESA. I don't know what that arrangement is, but as part of the safe space project, they've said that they have to pay rent to, to ESA Perth, so um, the rent would come under this this project, but whether or not for other things that they operate, whether or not they have to pay rent to ESA Perth, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Thank you, Sarah. Councillor Hearn. Yeah, how many people are we looking or are they looking to um, have at this um, event? Uh, and is the building uh, sufficient and has it got the, the right, um, what's the word for it, licenses in place to, to hold that sort of event? I think my understanding from previous conversations with the convener is all the licenses are there. I don't know how many people are involved. I confess. Does that include the fire regulations as well? I believe so. Uh, David, thank you, David. Yes, my understanding of follow-up actions, because Scottish Fire and Rescue visited East Upper premises earlier this year, forming concerns about overcrowding, some health and safety. Um, they went back. There were some improvement actions for East Upper to put in place, which they did. I also spoke to the chair who assured me that there was sufficient space, that they, they were complying with legislation based on their activities, on the current activities. I, uh, though I do understand the question in terms of if they're going to be 
significantly more people coming in is that you know, will I exceed and so I think that's a, a legitimate question for us to, to ask. Uh, thank you David um, yeah again perfectly legitimate questions of course and um, apologies on behalf of the top table I'm not quite sure we've answered them um, but my view unless there's any more questions is that despite the legitimacy of those questions and concerns I do think when you look at this proposal and on the whole it's a valuable project and there's lots of really decent organisations going to to benefit from that notwithstanding the, the concerns so um, my motion would be to fund the whole £6,848 but quite happy for anybody who thinks otherwise to put forward an amendment with that and I will seek a seconder for the 6848. But yeah, yeah, I think that's a fair point. So up to six thousand eight hundred and forty eight pounds. Yeah, my uh, thank you, Councillor Barrett. With apologies to everybody, I'm sitting with Councillor Parrott's laptop and of course and it's gone off and I don't know his password, probably just as well. It's 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 maybe a dead parrot convener, so um Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Councillor Hearn, would, would, did you want to comment further, please? Yeah, I'd like to put in an amendment um, based on my first question, which was the, the rent, um, which is quite considerable. So I'd like to uh, put an amendment in that we pay 3052 which is the difference between not paying the rent and for all the other items on the list. Yeah, thank you, Bailey Hearn. Has uh, Councillor Massey? Um, I no, I do not believe. I know that says rent premises rent at Eastall uh, Perth, but uh, I know the charity that I'm involved with. Uh, we have other uh, groups that come into the premises, and we actually charge them for the use of the premises. So I'm not sure that that is for for rent as such. That is actually to hold classes. It's that's what I would my understanding of that. Uh, thanks for that input, Councillor Massey. Um, any further comments or questions before we clarify just what we're we're voting for here? Are we all, we're all good. Hey, so, convener, I, I was going to speak in 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 seconding your 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 proposal. To be honest, but uh, we'll we'll go for it now because we do need to do that formally. So I'm putting that motion forward. So if you're happy to second my motion, Councillor Barrett, Councillor Peter Barrett, uh, go for it now, please. Right, thank you very much for that, Camille. And I will be, I will be brief. Um, I think when you, when when you look at the application, um, it looks like um, a, a good application. I think it's Genesis, sort of born out of the warm, warm spaces, and um, shows that shows that it's got a, a a proven track record and the kind of evolution of the community based supports, and um, that that we we, we can uh, help support be delivered in 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 Perth and. And and Ken Ross, I think when you look at the uh, the 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 co-funders, um, the Cora Foundation uh, providing uh, financial support for the the, the food aspect, uh, and uh, the the, the Ganicky Trust, who are increasingly uh, getting involved in in, in supporting uh, social wear, welfare initiatives, I, I think it's really good for Perth and Ken Ross, uh, Common Good Fund or Perth Common Good Fund uh, to be seen to be supporting this uh, and uh, uh, making it happen. So I'm very happy to uh, say. And your motion, convener. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Peter Barrett. Bailey Hem, do you want to say anything further in support of the amendment before I ask for a seconder? Uh, a seconder for Bailey Hem's amendment. Uh, apologies, Bailey Hem. I think the looks like the motion is going to carry if everybody's agreed, notwithstanding the, the amendment. Thank you. Um, thanks everyone. If I'll go and rescue the convener from out in the hall. Right. Thank you. I'll just have to get my computer back online. There we go. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Eric, for that. Um, we now move on to um, the one capital grant that we have before us, and that is St John's Kirk are requesting a grant of £50,000 towards the repair of the church spire. Um, I notice that um, this is a very expensive project being undertaken um, for the Kirk. Um, the Kirk is a very iconic and important building for Perth City Centre, but at the same time, um, the Perth Common Good Fund only has a limited amount of funds available for our small capital grants. And um, I would, my recommendation would be that we make a grant of £10,000 in this case, but I see that a number of questions are coming up. Um, Councillor Sheila McCall first. Thank you, Convener. I suppose my question is, I remember having this discussion before when we awarded them £20,000 a few years ago, and that was meant to address some of the issues. And it just seems that this is yet another thing that the Kirk requires. Um, and it just, I would agree with you, maybe not as low as 10,000, but I certainly think the full 50,000 is too much. <clears throat> no, thank you for that. I, I, I think, um, if you like, the sad truth is that um, some of our ancient Kirks, as I think Bailey Hearn knows well, um, from St Ninian's can absorb huge amounts of funds in, in terms of um, restoring and maintaining them. And, and I wish the, the various congregations um, you know, their best wishes in raising the funds and managing to maintain their properties. Um, but, but the Perth Common Good Fund is simply not able to um, provide the level of support that they might want. Councillor McCall again. I forgot to ask my question, I just made a comment. The question really is, do we have any indication of how how urgent this is? Because, you know, when you mentioned sitting in, there's a lot, of, a lot of churches, a lot of older buildings, you know, they, ha they have, they, they put in place fundraisers and, and they do the immediate remedial work that's required just to make sure that things are, are safe and secure and watertight usually. So I'm just wondering if there's any indication of what the urgency around this is. Thank you. This one, it has to be said, is specifically towards the restoration of the spire um, and putting the cockerel back on top of the spire. Um, and, and so, uh, if you like, it's, um, to my mind, this one is not um, an urgent wind and waterproof one. Um, it's simply um, the very expensive projects to um, restore the complete dignity, if you like, of the kirk with, with the, the cockerel on the spire. Councillor Liz Barrett. Um, I think yeah, I'm, I'm hanging into a comment as well in that I I agree with what you're saying, uh, Deputy Convener, having also been involved in um, a large church in the centre of Perth and the maintenance of that. And to go back to the question I asked earlier, um, certainly giving them the whole 50, and I would I would support your suggestion of 10, the whole 50 would take us over the capital grants budget that we had set for this financial year. Absolutely, and, and and thank you very much for your support there. You know, I, I, I would. My motivation here is, I whilst I, you know, accept the need of the Kirk, um, there are many other um, agencies, if you like, within the city um, who might be looking for um, small capital grants of the sort that we can give, um, and and I feel very strongly that we need to be able to, um, over the rest of the financial year, um, you know, provide the opportunity for support to others rather than simply spending it all on one project. Thank you, um, Bailey Crisahan. Thank you very much, convener. Um, yeah, my question went in before you put forward your suggestion of ten thousand. I would have queried, um, certainly giving them fifty thousand, and I query what the Perth Common Good Fund is for. Um, yes, we've given a lot of um, money in the past, but that's for events and things that are going on with the Kirk. Whether we are here to support the restoration or the repair of buildings for other organisations, in this instance, the Church of Scotland, I don't know whether that's right. And if we do, then I think that does open a floodgate for um, similar 
funding requests from other organizations um, and I could be parochial you've already declared my interest in St Ninians I could be the same if we've got a restoration fund and that of any other religious building in Perth and Kinross um, so I'm reluctantly happy to endorse your lower amount but I do think we need to think about whether that's what the Perth Common Good Fund is for. Thank you, Raj, um, and, and I'm grateful for your support. Thank you, Bailey Hearn. I, I think that um, the guidelines we have at the moment it is that we can contribute, if you like, capital sums towards um, any capital project for a building or uh, you know, groups uh, for equipment and whatever within the Perth city area. So to my mind, um, whilst there are other agencies that churches and other buildings might look to, it, it is to my mind um, perfectly proper for these agencies to look for support from the Perth Common Good Fund, um, but we can only provide that support um, in keeping with the nature of the resources that we have available to us. Councillor Peter Barrett. Yeah, um, thanks, convener. I would like to comment um, on this application at the appropriate stage, but my question is, do we have any uh, indication um, of what level of funding would be the de minimis uh, to, to trigger um, and release uh, the, the, the pending funding? Uh, to be honest, I don't think there's much point in awarding them £10,000 um, if that's still going to leave external funding locked. I'm, I'm not aware, I, I have to say, of um, any um, linkage or any perception of linkage between what we might grant and what what our other agencies might grant. And I suppose I, I didn't ask this question, my view being that our ability to assist here, if you like, is probably smaller than many other agencies and, and perhaps should not be seen as being key to unlocking other funds, although I do accept that it's entirely, it would be entirely appropriate of other agencies to see what support um, the Kirk had from the city before they made their funds available. And to a certain extent, that's what drives my belief that whilst we certainly can't, to my mind, support the whole amount they're looking for, we should demonstrate support that, if you like, is consistent with the resource that we have available to us. Thanks. Do you want to come back, Peter? Um, yeah, thanks, K uh, K convener. Um, I, I, I would like to um, propose an amendment. I'd like to propose an amendment that we award um, £20,000. Um, I think that this is um, a substantial um, project. It isn't just about putting a, a, a gilded cockerel on the top of the spire, um, £658,000 worth of, of, of spire repairs. Um, I think represent a, a, a very substantial uh, investment in the in, in the fabric of our uh, uh, historic uh, building heritage, um, and therefore I think it is entirely appropriate um, that Perth and Kinross, uh, a common sorry Perth Common Good Fund, um, supports the 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 the, the, the works uh, and uh, uh, is assisting uh, in leveraging in uh, the external uh, external funding. Um, I think St John's Kirk uh, is a, a, an increasingly um, important uh, a, a attraction in our in our city centre, uh, complementing uh, the, the 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 Perth Museum and Stone of uh, Destiny uh, uh, exhibition uh, immediately in in front of it. Um, and I, I think given that we've supported uh, St John's to the tune uh, of £20,000 previously, uh, it's uh, entirely appropriate that we, we, we come back uh, in, uh, with similar size of uh, assistance this time uh, round as well. Uh, I think the, the, the the unfortunate truth of the of, of, of the matter is is that you know historic churches um, are extremely um, expensive to to to, to maintain, uh, requiring uh, yearly, five yearly, and ten yearly significant sums to be um, invested uh, in them uh, to, to 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 keep them uh, safe uh, and watertight. Uh, and you know it wouldn't surprise me um, that you know similar requests are going to um, happen in the future. Indeed, for uh, this and for uh, other. Uh, Landmark churches uh, in our in our city centre. So uh, I I think you know twenty thousand um, pounds marks a, a 
uh, an appropriate uh, and generous uh, support from a uh, Perth Common Good Fund. Okay, no, thank you for that, um, uh, Councillor Piers Barrett. We'll, we'll certainly take that forward. Do, do you have a seconder for your amendment? Um, yes, indeed. Um, Councillor Liz Barrett will second the amendment. Do I have a seconder for the motion of £10,000? Yes, Bailey Ahern. Um, OK, in the absence of any further questions or comment, um, we'll go to a vote on that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, convener. I have a motion from yourself, seconded by Bailey Ahern, to grant £10,000 and an amendment from Councillor Peter Barrett, seconded by Councillor Liz Barrett, to grant £20,000. Members, when I call your name, please let me know if you're voting for the motion or the amendment. Bailey Ahern. Motion. Councillor Liz Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Peter Barrett. Amendment. Councillor Chan. Motion. Councillor Donaldson. Councillor McPherson. Uh, motion. Councillor Massey. Motion. Councillor McCall. Motion. Councillor Parrott. Motion. And Councillor Rebeck. Motion. Thank you. I have seven votes for the motion, two for the amendment and one member abstaining and therefore the motion will carry. Thank you very much. Um, in that case, we will make on this occasion um, a grant of £10,000. But uh, I, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not without a lot of sympathy, councillors Barrett, for your um, amendment. Um, the, the Kirk is indeed an iconic um, a structure and, and very important to the city um, and um, I, I would love to be able to give them a lot more money than we have a resource to do so. Thank you. We now move on to um, paper six, which is a paper that I trailed um, at the previous meeting. And, and the purpose of this paper is to, if you like, make um, provision for um, our guidelines to contain um, or, or our budget to contain um, an ongoing um, pre-allocation of funds um, in respect of um, the City of Perth Salute and the Perth and Kinross Mellor Association um, in much the same way as we currently make provision for the um, fireworks display. They are both um, large events, as is the firework display. Um, I think they are both um, important to the city of Perth. Um, I think the Perth salute, as it moves towards becoming a more community-based um, event rather than, if you like, a portion of the military to two um, is more worthy of um, the support from the Perth Common Good Fund. And therefore, um, in respect of both these um, events, I think it's um, better in terms of their magnitude and, and to give the organisers of these events some comfort that there is pre-allocated funding, that we make um, a, a pre-allocation of funding um, in our budgets going forward to, to support these events, um, but that will not take away the requirement as there is for the fireworks for the organisers each year um, to bid for um, the funds that they want in, in support of their events. And as indeed happens and has happened previously with the firework display, um, they may well bid for more funds than are pre-allocated and it will be entirely for committee to decide if we do want to allocate more funds to them against their bid than that which has been pre-allocated. Um, we do, of course, have to be mindful um, of the total resources available. But I think for myself, it's a more honest position if with these two major um, events, um, the budget reflects um, the degree to which we're offering support to these events and the consequent knock-on effect, if you like, to the small grants budget. Um, these, to my mind, are not really small grants, um, that they are events which um, committee should 
take a view on whether we are going to make um, an ongoing um, measure of support for them by virtue of a pre-allocation to our budgets. Um, do I have any questions or comment with, with regard to this paper? Thank you. No, I, I see none. Um, what I failed... Sorry, convener, I, convener, I did put a queue in. Um, sorry, sorry, it's um, for some reason the queue has not come up on my computer, but please, please go ahead, Peter. Um, and thanks. And it is a kind of, you know, um, question come come comment. Um, firstly, um, I agree with uh, uh, what you were saying in terms of the, the Perth Salute uh, transitioning to be a, a, a more, a more uh, community um, orientated event. Um, and one of the aspects that pleased me um, about that was um, the, the the sort of taster um, of the the, the Amila event um, that came to to, to follow, um, and I think that there's a, a a potentially you know very good blend between uh, the, uh, the 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 Perth Salute um, and the the, the Mila Festival um, itself, um, and that you know possibly by um, combining the two events, you could end up with something um, significantly stronger than having the two events um, run um, as separate um, uh, items in, in, in our calendar, particularly if they're going to uh, follow hard on the on, on the heels of each other. So um, I, I, I really just wanted to, to kind of float the idea um, of instead of because I, I think it also, um, you know, add to the certainty um, if if uh, these events were a, a put on a on on the same sort of uh, funding footing um, that you 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 spoke about. I think at the back of my mind is, you know, if if we were to amalgamate these events, um, would would they require um, two times seventeen and a half thousand pounds, um, or could we get a bigger bang for our our, our bucks um, with 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 um, a, a different support um, and I think there probably needs to be a discussion if members of the committee think that that is a good idea um, about you know how how would that be developed in in, in future um, and I don't know whether um, agreeing that the funding today would kind of preempt that discussion so um, I, I, I don't know whether it's worthwhile um, deferring this decision today, although agreeing in principle that you know the more secure funding is a better basis to work on, but whether there's a desire, you know, amongst members of the committee or indeed within the two organisations that they could collaborate uh, to a, a greater extent uh, and 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 have a, a an enhanced spectacle um, being hosted in Perth. Thank you for that, Peter. I um. <laughs> I, I, I certainly hear what you say in terms of perhaps um, organising one mega event, to misuse the word mega, um, rather than the two. But in a sense, I, I feel that that's for the organisers to address in, in their own time, um, if you like, um, going forwards. And I, I feel quite comfortable that we at the moment can um, make an allocation of our resource um, against the status quo of, of, of how these events are organised. Um, I don't think that, if you like, would you know, prevent further discussion as to just how events are organised. Um, I don't think it prevents discussion, um, if you like, with regard to the the actual level of funding that we supply in, in the future. So I'd, I, I would I would prefer to proceed on the basis of the paper that we have and, and make a provision if other members are agreeable. And, and, and then, if you like, wait to see um, how things pan out in, in, in terms of the organisation of events going forward. But, but, but Councillor McCall wants to come in with a comment as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I actually understand what you mean about the economies of scale? But my own view is that these are two entirely different events with different audiences. And I think the fact that they're held on separate occasions lends itself to some of the summer programme that we have here in Perth. And I know people who attend both, but I also know people who attend one or the other. And my worry would be if we tried to combine them into one event, we would actually lose some of the vibrancy of both, of each individually. Um, but I agree with, with the convener that it's maybe something that can be muted to the organisations in due course. But my instinct would be to keep them separate and to and I support the paper that you brought forward, convener. Thank you. 
Thank you. In in that case, um, my motion would be that we make, um, in accordance with the paper, um, a pre-allocation in our budget of the seventeen and a half thousand pounds um, to each event um, for next year's budget and and, and going forwards. Um, I don't know, Councillor Barrett, if, you, if if in view of that and, and your comments, you you want to make to raise an amendment. Thank you. Convener, there was an element of, of, of thinking out loud. I, I think in, in, in practical terms, you know, if if the organisations know that in order to secure funding, there has to be um, greater collaboration, um, then th then that's more likely to, 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 to happen. Um, and so, no, I, I won't, I, I, I wouldn't um, force it to, to, to uh, a, a, an amendment at this stage. Um, however, I think next year, convener, um, I, I, I would, I, I would, um, and I think that that maybe allows the organisations the space um, and, and also members the time um, to, to, to think whether um, that is the, 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 the best route to, to, to adopt um, or, or whether I'm completely wrong, you know, which, which, you know, perish the thought might be the case. So. Uh, th th thank you very much um, for that. I'm, I'm not going to comment as to whether you're right or wrong, Peter, but I, I, th I, I think you put forward a, a perfectly fair um, a viewpoint. And if you like, going forwards, others beyond the Common Good Fund Committee um, might recognise that there are economies of scale and, and, and they wish to do things differently. Um, but at the moment, I'm I'm content, if you like, to make a pre-allocation against the status quo of, of, of there being two separate events. Um, are we, is, is committee minded to support the recommendation that we pre-allocate in next year's budget £17,500 to each event? Agreed. Thank Agreed. you very much. Thank you. We now move to paper seven, um, the 2024-25 financial statement. And I would ask Fiona Lambie, who I think has been waiting very patiently in the margins um, or on the, on the edge of the computer um, to address this paper. Thank you, Fiona. Convener, it's actually myself that's going to address it today. Oh, OK, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, this, provide, this report provides for noting the details of the income and expenditure for the fund to 30th of June 2024 and the projected outturn for the current financial year. Since the April committee, the projected deficit has increased in the region of £9,000 due to the anticipated capital grants overspend of 12000 and the benefit of no requirement to charge depreciation of 3,000. The estimated fund balance at 31st of March 2025 of 2,020,000 is a movement of 26,000 since the last report. This is a combination of movements in the opening balance of 35,000 as detailed at section 4.3 and the projected deficit increase of 9,000 mentioned. As previously reported, the fixed rate deposit, which was renewed in February and attracted a higher rate of interest, hence the 18,000 increase to interest on investments. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Art Charlson. Are there any questions from members with regard to the financial statement? I see none. Are there any requests for comment with regard to the financial statement? I see none. Um, can we therefore approve the paper? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we now come to the moment when uh, we have private papers for consideration. And so I would ask all members if we can now um, jiggle with our machines and leave the current meeting and um, rejoin the private meeting. Thank you. <laughs>